To install Samurai Web Testing Framework on VMware Workstation Player, first install VM Workstation Player. There is other videos on this channel that show how to install the VMware software. To start with, you need to download Samurai Web Testing Framework. You can Google Samurai WTF and typically you'll pull up links to the main site and also to the download page. If you go to the main site, the download link is going to point you to the SourceForge download page. So you can just go straight to the download page on SourceForge. Under the project, which is called Samurai, notice there's no WTF on the end. You can go under the files directory and you'll see the different downloads. We want to download the latest copy, so we're going to go into the three branch and we want to get the latest file. So notice the latest at this time is version 331 and it comes as a compressed zip file. So click on that, download this zip file and save it to your downloads. So once the download starts, go ahead and let it finish. It's going to take a long time for the download to run. The file is about 4 gigabytes, give or take. So depending on your connection, expect this to take an hour or two. Once you get the file downloaded, the zip file, right click on it and unzip it. And inside you're going to find a folder. It will be Samurai WTF, the version, in this case 331.vmware vm. Having the file extension .vmware vm is best practice for VMware virtual machines because some versions of VMware, like VMware Fusion and Fusion Professional, recognize the extension as meaning that this folder contains all the files needed to run a virtual machine. This is usually only relevant on Mac systems. In this case, we're installing on Windows, so the extension really has very little meaning, but we'll keep it anyway because it tells us a little bit about what this file is. So we're going to move this folder from the downloads directory and put it into the virtual machines directory so that VMware can find it. If you've already created a virtual machine with VMware Player, then in your documents folder by default on Windows, you'll see that there's already a virtual machines folder. Since this is the first virtual machine installed, I'm going to create the virtual machines folder manually. Go inside and paste the Samurai virtual machine into the virtual machines folder. Inside of the download, you're going to see that all of the disk drives needed to run the operating system are present. There's also a VMDK file that describes these disk drives. And the VMDK file is the virtual disk from the virtual machine's point of view. Most important file is the VMX file. This is the configuration file that VMware Player considers to be the main file. If you look in this file, you'll see that it's the configuration for the virtual machine itself and contains all the settings. Now a lot of the settings you can set a lot easier just by using the manage tool inside of VMware Player. So there's really no reason to edit this file for some of the easier settings. But if you do need to set some of the settings that aren't exposed by the client software, you can edit this file. So now that the virtual machine has been moved into the virtual machine's folder, we can start VMware Workstation Player and select Open a Virtual Machine. You want to browse to the virtual machine's folder, go into the Samurai folder, and find the VMX file, and open this file. That's going to add Samurai into the library. Now each time you open VMware Player, you're going to see 
that the Samurai is already listed on the left inside of your library. And you can play the virtual machine just by clicking play or you can double click the name in the library. First, edit the virtual machine settings and make sure that you've given the virtual machine plenty of memory, in this case 4 gigabytes, and a couple of processors. You can give it more, but you do need to give it a minimum amount of CPU, a minimum amount of RAM to let it run properly. Also, if your machine that you're running your virtual machines on has a solid state disk, this is going to help a lot because these files are very large and loading them into the VMware software takes a lot longer on a non solid state disk. When you play the virtual machine, there may be some different errors that pop up. One is, is that the first time you start it, VMware may ask you if you moved or copied the virtual machine. Answer that you copied it. The reason it's asking is, is that it wants to know if it should keep all the network settings exactly the way it is, or if it's okay for VMware to change the network interface. For example, to change the MAC address and the IP address and so on. So answer that you copied it. Secondly, if you get an error message that says that the virtual machine cannot be started because VTX has not been enabled, then you need to shut down your operating system, restart the computer, go into the BIOS, and enable VTX. The VTX, or virtualization technology, is a feature of the Intel processors that lets virtual machines access the physical CPU directly without having to go through the virtualization software. And some virtual machines cannot operate unless VTX is enabled. So follow the directions for your particular computer to enable that. Also, if you get an error that some types of translations are not working, make sure that you're running these operating systems on a 64-bit copy of VMware Workstation Player installed on a 64-bit operating system. You can run a 32-bit VM on top of a 64-bit host, but doing the opposite doesn't work so well.